are the Young Turks really sellouts? Now, this video is going to be covering two sort of uh, two different things. Okay, first of all, the sort of uh, idea that the Young Turks are the sellouts for the establishment and all this stuff. And so we will talk about that. But also, this will also be talking about, you know, why the Young Turks are hated so much. Because for some reason, it seems like the Young Turks is like the most hated group out of all. And it always seems so contrived. It always seems to be just really overbearing. But they get hated on by like multiple different groups of people. So they're obviously going to be hated on by the conservatives. You know, the Ben Shapino, Stephen Clam Chowder types. Um, and then you've also got hate from people who are like far lefties, like, you know, anarchists or, and whatnot. And then you also get sort of hate from the Jimmy Dore, you know, esque group, you know, his fans. Um, and so it's super weird. And so this video was inspired by just like months on months of me just seeing this kind of stuff. And I have pulled up multiple examples here to show you guys, you know. Uh, and answer the question whether or not 2IT are sellouts as well as, you know, why it is that they get, you know, so much hate. But as we can uh, go ahead and pull up here, this is actually the first, or not the first, this is first for this video, but this was one that I remembered. This is from June 27, 2019. Now, I believe the context of this tweet was, it was like right after, I believe, the first debate, is my, is, if I'm rem remembering correctly. And... Um, Pat the Burner is somebody who's a progressive on Twitter. He does a lot of meme accounts. He does a lot of meme accounts of, you know, Peter Dow, for example, and other people as well, and Nate Silver. So he's actually really good. He makes really funny content on Twitter as well as he's just a progressive dude, you know what I'm saying? So he's just good in general. And he sent out a tweet saying, TYT folks are attacking Bernie. That's the end for me. And then he responds to that by saying, of TYT, if that wasn't clear as day. So, and then we're going to get into the other post too. But as you can see here, like, this tweet already just doesn't seem legit. Like, which TYT folks are attacking Bernie? Where is TYT attacking Bernie? Where is this going on? He never actually cites any examples of this. All he does is allude to Emma Vigland, which Emma Vigland still, I believe, supports Bernie over Warren, but she does seem to have a weird infatuation with Elizabeth Warren for, like, no apparent reason whatsoever. It's really weird. But, uh, you know, the comments that she made about Bernie were not attacks. There were, like, critiques of how he could perform better in the debate. There were in no way, like, some sort of malicious attack or something like that. No, there were... They were just critiques of like, oh, this is how Bernie could do better in the debate. That's not the same thing as an attack. And also, when you say TYT folks, and you're talking about one specific person who's not even a main show host, you're you're being a hack and you're being a fraud. And this type of stuff is just disingenuous. And that's why it's sad when it comes from people, progressives, let alone, you know, someone like Pat the Burner. It's just, it, this is really, this is irresponsible is what it is, and it's not cool and, you know, at the time I'd sent out a tweet saying, you know, who of TYT is going after Bernie? No response. No one really gave me anything. Again, just people alluding to Emma Viglin's comments, which, again, were not sort of these attacks and there were critiques. But even if it were her, she's not a TYT main host and she's one person at a business with like 100 people there or something like that, 50 to 100 people. So is it fair to make your tweet TYT, folks? And also, when you read this tweet, you get, I immediately got the feeling like, oh, this person already hates TYT. They're just looking for a reason to, like, crap on them and to be like, oh, I'm done. They're just looking for something like that. And then he responds again because people are asking, like, wait, who? Who are you talking about? He says, in lieu of responding to everyone, I'll just post here. I was probably overly harsh on TYT, which really wasn't my point, but I get why it was taken that way. I'm just fed up with the number of their key people throwing shade at Bernie while ignoring glaring flaws in Warren. So again, as you can see here, he's sort of walking this back, but really this should have been a tweet that he deleted because this is irresponsible. You know, this is not a legitimate sort of reporting of what's going on. There were no TYT folks attacking Bernie, nor if you're alluding to Emma Viglund's comments, is it fair to say in that after that that, oh, TYT folks are attacking Bernie when you mean just Emma Viglund, even though her comments don't even qualify? This is irresponsible. This is the type of tweet Nate Silver would put out, some hack fraud in the media would put out, not someone who's a progressive, let alone Pat the Burner. 
And so, you know, uh, and he knows that he's overly harsh on TYT. He's just making stuff up, stuff up. Like, he just made this up. Like, there's no, there are no TYT folks attacking Bernie. And he actually, uh, let me see if I can find this down here. But here is, here's another one. He says, half their folks trash him and promote Warren, which is ridiculous. Support her fine, but it's transparently undermining Bernie. One shot, our shot at real change. That's obviously false as well. And he doesn't actually give any examples once again. And there's a tweet somewhere down here. I don't know if I can find this down here. But he has a tweet where he just, oh, he says that he's a fan of Jimmy Dore. And so that is very disappointing because obviously Jimmy Dore is an idiot and a doofus. And if you're a fan of Jimmy Dore, that does sort of reflect on your intelligence level as well as just your personality in general. Um, but, you know, this is basically someone who is a Jimmy Dore fan who, again, like I said earlier, is one of the groups of people that seems to always hate on TYT. So uh, moving on to the second example I have pulled up here. I actually did a video on this, so if you haven't checked that out, I recommend you checking that out because I gave my breakdown on this whole thing. But basically, Jenk was on his old school show on TYT, and let's hear what he says. I'm not a Democratic Socialist of America, uh, and now the last part will make, might make people even the most angry. Um, comrade? No, nah, I'm not calling anybody a comrade, okay? So it's incredibly stupid politics, okay? Like, and, and I'm not going to do it. Uh, and I don't, and you're not my comrade, uh, okay? You're, you're my, you know, you're a fellow citizen. I love you. I'm going to fight for you like no one fights for you. But I'm not calling you comrade, uh, and I'm not using Soviet terminology. Anyway, I'm not a So, of course, this is going to uh, trigger all of the far lefties who, you know, whatever, live in their basement or whatever. So... Now he's got people who are far lefties who are hating on him as well. So you've got the Jimmy Dore crowd, you've got the far lefties, and then obviously I don't even have to pull up any examples of right-wingers doing it. I mean, the, all of their videos are always filled with a bunch of troll comments from right-wingers who have no lives. So, you know, there are so many different groups that hate on, on TYT and Jank, and I'll tell you in a second why it's kind of stupid, but here's some of the responses which are hilarious to me. Um... This one says, Jenk has always been a Pied Piper con artist, just looking for the grift with the rebirth of the left. He clearly underestimated and overestimated his grifting ability in a world where it's paycheck, payback time for the crimes of this ugly system. Like, imagine being so insane, so deluded in your own delusions, that you believe, seriously, that Jenk Uger is a grifter. How is he a grifter? That literally makes no sense. It's unsubstantiated claim. It's a bunch of bogey. Let alone the fact that, you know, he's he's a co-founder of the Justice Democrats, which has totally changed the whole system. And, you know, obviously he works his ass off to do all those things. But we will uh, we will get to those in a second. Here's another one. Another one says, this is hilarious too. It says, Jen continues to move ever rightward, rejecting democratic socialist policy, politics, engaging in red baiting by reducing the term comrade to Soviet terminology. So he's saying that Jenk is moving rightward. How on earth is Jenk moving rightward? He's literally right where he is. He's literally... Uh, in fact, what's, what's hilarious about this is that Jenk started out as a right winger, so he's moved ever leftward. He's not moved ever rightward. How has he moved right? What? Because he's not using the term comrade? You already knew what Jen that Jenk is not like, he's not a socialist. You already knew that. So, you know, he's a dude who sports Medicare for all, big welfare state, etc., etc., $15 minimum wage, all this stuff, right? How has he moved rightward? That's so, this is so, these are the delusions of people like this, like people who have Marxist in their name and like stupid hammer and whatever, like a bunch of, you know, actually those might be carrots. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but th these are the delusions of people like this who think that Jenk has moved ever rightward. How has he moved right wing? He hasn't moved right wing at all. It's just stupid as hell. But what's really hilarious about this stuff, and this is a good example of this, I would say, where he says that like, oh, Jenk is a grifter, is that Jenk has done so. Jenk and TYT have done so much for the progressive sphere. It's really insane, and nobody seems to give them credit for it. Now, critiques of TYT are always fine, of course. I don't really watch TYT much, uh, if at all, honestly. 
Um, but, you know, I found Secular Talk because of TYT. I don't even think that really these shows would necessarily be on YouTube without TYT because I don't know if there would have been the viewer base to hold up an infrastructure of channels like those without TYT. Because TYT kind of revolutionized online news in general, let alone on YouTube, let alone for the progressive sphere. But all of your favorite shows, they're all either still affiliates for, of TYT or they were previously affiliates with TYT. Said Kyle Klinsky, Secular Talk, he's still on the network. David Pakman, previously on the network, had split independently. You know, the Majority Report, still uh, still an affiliate. Jimmy Dore Show, you know, his, his channel was owned by TYT. His channel was started by the Young Turks. He had to buy it off because it was, you know, he wanted to split on his own. So all these shows that you're thinking of that are your favorite shows, they all, they all got a big boost. And honestly, again, I don't know if the YouTube viewership would have had the infrastructure and the amount of people to view their videos without TYT revolutionizing the entire platform and the way online news is done. And so, you know, when you you should think about that. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about they were the ones who really facilitated all of these different people. Then you also have that Jenk is the co-founder of the Justice Democrats, okay? Now, the Justice Democrats, of course, the platform, my personal opinion and the way that I see that whole situation is I think that it was Kyle's idea. I think that Kyle wrote the whole thing. I think he wrote the whole platform. I'm sure Jenk maybe added a few details or something like that, but I think it was pretty much mostly his platform. But I think Kyle knew that he needed Jenk to help him with this because Jenk has a massive audience over at TYT of over 4 million subscribers, and they're pretty damn good at fundraising money. And so he knew that he needed that infrastructure to help boost the Justice Democrats. And so without Jenk, JD is not where it is. Like a, a solo secular talk mission for the Justice Democrats is not where it is now. They wouldn't have birthed AOC. They wouldn't have got, you know, seven seven people to win congressional elections. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this is not, this is simply, this is simply not something that would have happened without Jenk. And so when people like this who call him a grifter, when he's done an insane amount. Again, you can't even begin to understand the impact that the AOC and the Justice Democrats have had. They've changed the entire political landscape. They changed the conversation. They shifted the Overton window. Everything has changed now that they're in office. Now that AOC is in there and she's proposed that, you know, 70% marginal tax rate on money made over $10 million in a year. You know what I'm saying? So, you need to understand that. So, when I, I just, I can't help but laugh. When idiots like this, and I presume this person is probably some far left idiot too, like you're like, oh, he's a grifter. Dude, you're never even going to inch close to what he's done in like even 10 minutes as you'll ever do in your entire life. This guy is a co founder of the Justice Democrats and he facilitated the growth of all of these different progressive channels. And, you know, just idiots like this. Like, it's hilarious to me that these people have such such a lack of just a sense of reality and understanding of reality and what's going on and understanding of, you know, just this, just what's going on around you, man. It's just stupid. It's just dumb at this point, man. Like, you're talking about so many different groups seeming to hate on TYT for no reason and people who are never going to do a thing in their life to push progressivism at all but just sit in their basement and tweet out tweets on Twitter like, with a hammer and sickle background and some dumb, like, Marxist name on Twitter. Like, it's it's hilarious to me. So there are three groups, which basically encompasses almost all of the people. Far lefties and Jimmy Dore squad, as well as all the conservatives. So they're getting hate from a bunch of sides, while simultaneously they're doing the most to, uh, you know, help the progressive community. And so I find it hilarious that, like, Everyone shits on them as they do by far the most work out of anybody else. They facilitated all progressive media on YouTube. And they also, you know, uh, Jenk was a co-founder of the Justice Democrats. And the JD is not what it is today without Jenk Uger. Simple as that. They wouldn't have had the funding. They wouldn't have had the media outreach because Jenk has connections. He's written in Washington Post and different different big news outlets like that. The Hill, etc., etc. Now... Are TYT sellouts? Now, of course, they're not sellouts, but one thing I will say is that they do seem to go easy on Warren in terms of interviews in exchange for access, because basically, 
you know, and they've railed against this for years, is that you can't, like, as a news org, you can't give a politician a, a hardball interview because they're not going to reappear in your show. Like, you think Elizabeth Warren's going to go on TYT if it's a hardball left-wing interview? No, she's going on to, you know, pitch her stuff, hopefully have a sort of easygoing interview, and that's pretty much it. That's the goal of Elizabeth Warren. So I think that they go easy on Warren for that reason. Um, you know, but I don't think that TYT are sellouts in any way. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on this down below. Very curious to hear them.